You definitely had, and I, I mentioned yesterday on the walk that we'd try and get you a photograph of every woodland kingfisher that we could, uh, mainly because of the fact that they're en route back to the Central Africa and, uh, and one of the last days of summer, one of the last times that we're going to be able to give you good visuals and good sightings of, uh, of a woodland kingfisher. There's one now in the tree. He's just had a bath and, uh, and that's why he's busy cleaning his wings and I'm hoping that we can get a little bit closer to him so it's a bit of a better visual than we've got for you now. Let's see if we can get a bit closer for you. But we are on the track of Shongile. We've managed to find her tracks. And um, she's unfortunately moving south towards one of our boundaries at the moment. And can you believe it? But Taylor was right, right where she was. She actually came out onto the road and are walking, is walking on top, was walking on top, of, uh, on top of Taylor's car tracks. Can you believe it? And chooses to do. Birds obviously keep their feathers in tip-top condition, especially now because of the fact that they're needing to make such a massive journey. It's about a 5,000 kilometer, 4,000 mile journey from here to Central Africa. And they're going to need to be in the best condition that they can be in to get all the way up there and still have enough energy to feed along the way and to look after themselves and obviously when they get there to, to look after themselves. And that's what that bird's doing now. Just had a bath, shaking the water off of the feathers, opening the feathers slightly so that the draft of the wind dries the water because the, the water, the saturated feathers would obviously increase his weight and he'd use too much energy to fly around if they were still wet. And then using his beak to just straighten out the feathers themselves. Make sure that all the filaments are aligned and that they're in the best condition that they can possibly be. Catching the most wind, able to slide over one another there you can see that blue color now shining out on that wing panel. Such a diagnostic color, an unusual color for us to see out here. The same color as the sky. Deep summer sky. Yes, that is really, really awesome. He's putting on a nice show for us as well. Hey? Let's see if we can get a bit closer to him. Since he is bathing and can't go anywhere because of the water, Let's push our luck a little bit and see if we can get you a better picture. Now with these birds, you don't want to get too close. You can see he's, you can see he's still flaring out his feathers there. And that's because he's had a decent bath and it, it gives us the opportunity to get a little bit closer. And that very nice. There you go. Paul, uh, you just asked me where do the woodland kingfishers go to out of season for us. They go into Central Africa. Pormund. Sorry, you just asked uh, where do the kingfishers go uh, when they're not with us, when they're out of season. They go into the equatorial Africa. So they go to the equator. There's deep rainforests there. The impenetrable forest, as it's called. And uh, they go into the impenetrable forest and go and spend a a post wet season there although it rains there much much more than it does here they can't be there during the very very heavy rains because they wouldn't be able to find anything to eat so they come out of those very wet areas in the deep summer they come and live here the insect the insect numbers are incredibly high here grasshoppers termites etc they come and put on a lot of weight here they come and breed here and then they go back again there and they go and feed off the insects in the rainforest before coming back again for december so quite nice. Right, so we're going to be sending you...